A still life painting is basically a painting of one or more objects. Still life is one of the important genres or categories of Western painting, the others being landscape, figure and portrait paintings, and non-representational or abstract paintings. There are also paintings that combine two or more of these categories, like the figure painting that has a landscape setting. Still life painting goes back to the ancient Greek and Roman artists and may have started much earlier. Greek and Roman artists painted still lives as a symbolic way of offering food to gods and goddesses. The term still life comes from the Dutch still even, and Dutch still lifes of the 17th century are considered to be among the best ever painted. Still life subjects, usually food, flowers, household objects, won't move like a living person or animal, and the lighting won't change like it would if you were outside painting a landscape. This gave artists the ability to take their time and produce some of the most detailed and realistic paintings ever. If flowers wilted or fruit rotted, artists could substitute new ones, and no one would know by looking at the finished painting. However, the decay of fruit and flowers featured symbolically in traditional still-life paintings. While these 17th century Baroque paintings focused on beautiful fruit, other foods, and flowers, they carried a different meaning than you might think. If you look closely at these paintings, you will see that some of the flowers are wilting and some of the fruit is starting to decay, and there are insects crawling all over everything. Because of this, the paintings are considered to be memento mori, or a reminder that you, you are, are going, going to, to die. die. So, you shouldn't focus on sinful, fleeting pleasures and beauty, but instead should concentrate on your immortal soul. Paintings that make this point specifically are called vanitas still lifes, like this one that has a candle about to burn out, a clock, a wilting flower, a letter that has been crossed out, and in case you still don't get the point, a human skull. On the other hand, collectors of these paintings were able to have it both ways. They were aware of the religious message, but they could also enjoy the realistic paintings of good food, beer, fancy flowers, and other things that gave the exact kind of sinful pleasure that you were supposed to avoid. Mama told me not to, I did anyway misbehaving. Daddy said don't, but I said I'm gonna miss. Unlike earlier generations of artists, painters in the 17th century didn't have to do commissioned work for popes, kings, or queens, but they could make a living selling paintings to the emerging middle class. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm gonna make sure it's, the it's when it pretty dumb to call anything the greatest anything. But this still life by the Spanish painter Cotan is considered to be the greatest still life painting. In the early modern period, French Impressionist painters like the confusingly named Edward Manet and Claude Monet painted traditional still life subjects but with a new style. The paint was applied in thick brush strokes that were not blended. These paintings are not as resolved and detailed as the earlier Dutch paintings, but instead focus on the beauty of color and juicy brushwork, as in this detail of the Manet painting. This technique is referred to as open brushwork, or a painterly style. Later in the 19th century, Van Gogh used still life subjects as vehicles for personal expression and artistic experimentation. Although he failed to find success and took his own life in 1890, his still life of sunflowers sold 97 years later in 1987 for $39.85 million, which was three times more than any previous art sale. By the mid 1900s, modernist painters like Henri Matisse and Pablo Picasso were using still life subjects as starting points for even more radical explorations of color and composition. In the 1960s, a group of artists began to base their paintings on photographs rather than painting directly from life in a style called photorealism. Although the paintings used realistic techniques that are similar to those used by the Dutch Baroque painters, the subjects of photorealistic still life tend to reflect contemporary life, technology, and consumer culture. Today, a lot of artists paint still life subjects every day as a way to keep painting skills sharp, produce interesting work, and as a form of focused daily meditation. Many of these artists share their work in groups on social media. 
there are many interesting still life painters working today, and here are a few examples. Wow. 